When taking photos, a common problem is unwanted objects in your image. Let's take a look at three methods you can use to remove unwanted objects from your photos in PhotoP. All three of these methods can give you great results, depending on the complexity of the item you're trying to remove, or the background behind it. So let's check out how they work, and when you should use each of them. I'll be using these three images today, and you can download each of them from Pexels if you want to follow along. The links are in the description. But before we get started, if you find this content useful and would like to help enable me to produce more, please consider supporting me on Coffee at coffee.com slash today's toots. Any amount is appreciated and will help keep this channel active. Let's start with this beach photo first. This is the simplest way to remove an item with the least effort. First, duplicate the background layer so we can work on this non-destructively and rename the new layer Fill. Zoom in using the Zoom tool or just hold down Alt and scroll up with your mouse wheel. We're going to remove one of these umbrellas and its shadow by using the Fill option. This method works best when the background is not too complicated, like with this sandy beach. The umbrellas are completely surrounded by the same type of background, which allows PhotoP to calculate what it should look like for you. You could run into difficulties using this method if the background was half sand and half pavement, for example. PhotoP would have trouble calculating exactly what it should look like, but with just a sandy background with a simple pattern, it can do all the work for you. First, we need to make a selection of the object we want to replace. Switch to the Lasso Select tool here, or just click the L key. Now, draw a selection around the umbrella you'd like to remove, keeping the selection as tight around the object as possible. You want to minimize the selected area so that PhotoP only has to replace as much of the background as necessary. It doesn't need to be perfect, but get as close as you can. Once you have your selection, go up to the Edit menu and select Fill. Change the Fill option to Content Aware and select OK. It will take a few seconds to calculate what will be in the area that is filled in, and the umbrella will be replaced. You can see how PhotoP filled in the background based on the content surrounding what you're trying to replace, since we had Content Aware selected. In this case, it used some of the sand from up in this area. Let's try one more. Use the Lasso Select tool. Draw a selection around the item. And go to Edit, Fill, and make sure Fill is set to Content Aware, and click OK. Nice, it looks pretty good. If we zoom out, you can't tell where the edit is. It looks completely natural. Let's move on to the next image and the second method you can use to remove objects. In this image, we're going to remove this clip, which is a little more difficult since it's on wood with the wood grain behind it. Using the previous method, fill, this wouldn't get good results. Let's take a look at what would happen if we used fill here. I'll make a quick selection with the Lasso Select tool and try to get it as accurate as possible. Then I'll go to Edit and Fill. and you can see the issues we have. It doesn't look too bad, but the wood grain doesn't line up. Some of this texture doesn't belong here, and this line is broken. So I'll press Ctrl Z to undo, and let's duplicate the background layer. We'll be using the patch tool here, so I'll rename the layer to patch. We've already got a pretty good selection, so let's leave that as is, and I'll switch to the patch tool, which you can find here, or just press the J key until you have the patch tool activated. From here, just click and drag inside the selection, and PhotoP will patch the selection with the texture from the opposite direction from where you drag. Make sure to keep everything aligned as best as possible, and release the mouse button. Since we don't have much room to patch this area with, after releasing the mouse button, click and drag down again until everything is removed. There, now everything is patched cleanly. If we zoom out, everything looks good. So use the patch tool when the background starts to get a little more complex and you need to manually align elements to keep them looking clean. Finally, we've got our most difficult example, which neither the fill or patch tool can fix for us. In this image, I want to remove the woman, leaving just the building behind her. There are lots of differing textures and edges that will give the other tools problems. You won't be able to get clean results using either of them. But PhotoP has another tool, the Clone tool, which will work great with images like this. This method will take the most effort, but you can do some amazing stuff with it. 
let's duplicate the background layer and rename it to Clone. Select the Clone tool here, or press the S key. The way the Clone tool works is by taking a sample from a point on the image, and then we can paint on the canvas, which will be filled in with content from the area we selected. You can choose where to take a sample from by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the canvas. So first, we need to remove her from the blue part of the wall. I'll take a sample from up here, and we'll use that to paint over. So hold down Alt and click in this area. Notice the brush now contains some of the blue from the area we clicked. If I increase the size of the brush, you can see how the image itself has been added to the brush. I'll decrease the size back down, and notice that when I hold the left mouse button down, it paints on top of the image from the source area where we selected. Notice the little crosshairs to the right of the brush. That shows you where the sample is painting from. So as you paint down, you can see how this tool is working, painting on the canvas, starting from the sample area we defined. Before we get started, one issue we'll have that may make this look unnatural is the hardness of the brush. The edges of the brush are hard and can make it difficult to paint smoothly over the background. So let's turn down the hardness to about 40%. Now, when we paint, the edges are softer, which will make it a little easier to paint naturally over the background. Then, just use the brush to paint over her head, where the blue paint is on the wall. Try to get right up against this white section, and go ahead and fill in any areas which would have the blue paint behind her. Next, we need to fill in this white box, but we need to use the clone tool to create the edge, the transition between white and blue. Let's go over here and make a new sample, starting from the corner of this white box, and we'll clone it over to the other side. Hold down Alt, align the crosshairs right over this corner, and left click. Hold down the space bar and drag the canvas back over, and align the corner that you can see on the brush where you think the corner of this square is, and just paint over to the right. Align the brush up with the corner you just painted, and start painting down, filling in the left edge all the way down to the bottom. Then, go ahead and paint in the inside of this square. If you go too far and paint in some texture that you don't want, just hold down Alt and take another sample from inside the white square and paint over anything you don't like. Now, we have another edge here that we need to duplicate, so take a sample right on the edge, Line up the edge from the brush with the edge from the background, and start painting over and filling that edge out. Keep painting down, and fill in this area here. Take another sample from the bottom edge. Line up the brush, and fill in this area. That's really all there is to it. Just keep taking samples from areas that can replace the old image, and fill them in. Sometimes you might get areas that look a little funny since the lighting and texture is slightly different on different areas of the wall. If that happens, just take a sample closer to the area you are painting over and fill in any spots that don't look natural. Anytime you have a hard edge or corner, take a sample directly over it. That way, you can line up your brush with the edge and replace it perfectly. Just keep making samples and filling in where necessary. Here, I'll make a sample of the edge between the wall and ground, and paint over her feet. And there you go. She is completely removed from the finished image with a natural looking background using the clone tool. So a quick recap. Using fill with content aware selected, we can remove items that are on fairly simple backgrounds with one texture and no edges that need to be lined up. If an item needs to be replaced on a background that has edges or textures that need to be lined up to look natural, we can make a selection and use the patch tool to drag and remove the item, preserving the edges. And finally, 
when we have a complicated background with multiple textures and edges that won't look clean using either of these methods, we can use the clone tool to take a sample and paint directly from the sampled area and repeat until we have fully removed the item. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Follow me on Twitter at Today's Toots if you'd like to get in contact or to find out when I post new videos. See you next time.